Welcome back to my next video here at Piano Music and Repair. Today's video, I'm just going to be um, doing a little bit of talking in this video. I'm going to make sure that I have everything on there, which I should. Today, I want to be talking a little bit about restoration on um, not this piano right here. This is my... Um, in case you're this is my Kimball um, Grand Piano. I don't know the model, I never really looked into it. Um, but today I'm gonna be talking about a little bit of something different that a lot of people never think about or, or do. Um, and today I'm going to be kind of changing that up and I'm gonna be making a whole series on this exact topic. Um, so today's video, I'm just going to be talking about re restoring and rebuilding a spinet piano. And yes, spinet by, which not meaning this big monster grand piano. I just, you, I'm just sitting beside this for the video. Um, the grand, the, the spinet piano was invented in the depression. So first I want to kind of go around a little bit of history of the spinet piano, but not too much. And I'm going to explain why people say that the spinet piano is not a good piano to have around. The, I'm gonna be telling you the pros and cons of the spinet piano. Um, the spinet piano was built to be really small, of course, um, y'all that is, um, y'all that know a thing or two about pianos and the sizes and the different types would know that the spinet piano is one of the smaller pianos out there. Um, Unless you're like me and you have a really rare 1930s miniature 61 key Wurlitzer, <laughs> um, that takes it. But um, I'm just going to be talking about the regular spinet piano. Um, now, the spinet piano was invented in the Depression. And back then, it's where people had very little money and, um, hard, and very little materials. And they had to, um, they didn't have all the, the, um, they didn't have all the, the stuff to build these big, tall, heavy, professional, upright grand pianos. Um, they didn't have the materials. Um, so in the Depression, of course, they didn't have very much money in that time. And they had to kind of think on how to make the piano smaller and more compact. Um, so that's when they invented the spinet piano and the spinet piano, unlike an upright piano where you have, I'm not sure if you can see me very well, hopefully you can see me. On the upright piano you have, you have the keys and you have the action sitting on top. And that's what makes the piano really tall is the action goes on top. And then of course the pianos are taller because of string length and string length is a very, it plays a very big role in the spinet piano. Um, it, and now string length, now that's why a lot of people, you will hear them say the, the tone is not, the, the, the sound is not the best on the spinet, um, and that's because where it's such a short piano, the strings ain't very long, therefore you're going to have a more tubby dull sound, um, in the strings, um. But also, the piano where the upright piano action we usually sit on top of the keys on the upright piano. The spinet piano, however, the keys are are shorter because the keys on a on a spinet piano can't go under, but the keys on a spinet piano are shorter, and the action is called an indirect blow action. So the action is dropped down below the key bed that's so therefore the piano is a very short um, now it's mainly left to right the the width left and right is usually cl pretty close to the same like a console or a studio upright piano um, pretty similar um, this, this is mainly height of the piano we're talking about it's still an 88 key piano um, but the, the actions drop down below and every and the keys are smaller and it's got like called um, lifter wires and elbows and they come up and they attach on the back of the key 
and it pulls a wire and that's how it pulls the action from down below, from up above and that's how it pulls the action. So, um, basically, the reason why technicians charge so much to work on a spinet piano, and of course this is, this this will be another video's topic by the way, but I'm just going to go ahead and just break it down really quick right here. Um, because when you have to work on a spinet piano action, unlike an upright piano action, you know, an upright piano action you can just take the front of it off really easily with either a latch or some screws and you can do your repairs like if you need to um, replace a back check or you need to um, let's for say you need to replace like a back check belt just something around the back just something on the whipping or something um, that's like on the whipping maybe you need to put a new bridle strap in um, on an upright piano all you do is open it up and do them repairs Unlike a spinet piano where them lifter wires are covering the front of the action, you have to take the action out of the piano in order to do that type of maintenance. So that's a really big issue with the spinet piano. Um, so basically, the, they don't make they do not make spinet pianos anymore because of that reason. Because it was so it's so hard for technicians to work on. I've um, I have called technicians in the past to come work on some spinet pianos and they would not respond simply because it is a spinet piano. Um, in my opinion, you know, you need to do your job, but you know, it is a hard, and that's, and that's another reason why, a reason why the piano is a dying field, the acoustic piano, is because of the spinet piano. It's, people do not like to work on them. Um, they're very difficult to work on. They're not... Like an upright piano, like if I get a call to a house and they say we have a spinet piano with a dropped action, that means I have to take the whole piano apart to work on it. And like a regular upright, you just take the front off and do your repairs. Unless you're working on the back with the dampers, then you have to take the action out either way. Um, so, so that kind of covers the history and the reason why people frown upon a spinet piano. Um, now I'm going to go to, into the restoration. That was that, that right there is why people do not, um, you don't hear anybody restoring or rebuilding a spinet, is because of them reasons right there. But I'm going to be perfectly honest. Me, I do, I don't mind working on a spinet piano. Um, I have an old spinet piano. Um, I went and got me an old spinet piano. Um, my, my dad had a job about three hours to bring it. But I found an old spinet piano. I have I already have it down at the shop, and we're going to be rebuild. We're going to be restoring this piano, and um, there's going to be like I don't know how many parts this series that there's going to be. But there's going to be it's going to be a whole series about um, the res restoration and rebuilding of a spinet piano. So y'all can kind of get an idea of how that would go out because you know either you see people rebuilding upright pianos or grand pianos, well we're going to change it up and we're going to do a spinet piano. So. Um, so yeah, um, any questions like how to, any, if you, and this will also help with just people trying to do simple maintenance. And these videos that I'm about to start putting out, I'm going to start recording them tomorrow. Um, um, I think this will be something that, um, would be educational to a lot of people. Something that needs to be done because you never hear people restoring spinet pianos. Um, like we're going to be doing restringing, um, refinishing, retopping. Um, re replacing tuning pins, we're going to be doing everything, um, felts, pedals, we're going to be doing all of it. So um, stick around, um, you will learn something. If, if you are interested in music and pianos, you will learn something from this. And I, I have a feeling I'll learn some stuff as, as well going down the road with it. So, um, a piano is nothing bad, it's just people are walking away from them because of their maintenance, like this piano, I haven't tuned it in a long time. I need to get over here and tune it because it needs it pretty pretty bad. But um, but yeah, stick around for that series. Um, that was a little bit about the history of the grand piano and why people don't fool with them or rebuild them or restore them. And today I'm changing that up and I'm going to rebuild and restore a spinet piano. Now the spinet piano I have is a winter company spinet. 
Um, I don't know how old it is. I'll have to look into that. That's another thing we'll do. I'll show y'all how to look at numbers on pianos of how to find out the age. That'll be another thing I do. Um, so yeah, stick around. I hope y'all enjoy, and I'll see y'all here soon. So have a good one. This has been Piano Music and Repair. I'll play y'all a little outro to end the video. Have a great one, and I'll see you in the next video.